right, so we're here again for another mobile reasoning, and this time it is just another off the chain, above the levels conversation with some dynamic individuals. MSMEs, make sure you're paying attention because this mobile reasoning is for you. So, you are starting, Danny, a, a concentration on MSMEs in Jamaica where you're saying the mom and pop shops, the people who sell different products right. that usually sell to a nine block radius if that. Mm -hmm. You're saying, but the world wants your products. Why? Well, we're saying that and we're also saying that your traditional customer is um, shifting his or her um, habit. So yeah. it's no longer walking the eight or nine blocks yes. looking for that product anymore. It's looking online. Yeah. So not only will that business lose the current customers, well, let alone obviously not get not acquire new customers if that person doesn't tra doesn't adjust her business, doesn't take her business from the street to the internet. That's mm -hmm. kind of the reasoning yeah. behind. So yes. so is it? Clifford, so is it that you're looking for individuals that manufacture things? Or is it just you're looking for individuals, entrepreneurs that sell anything? Really, we're focusing on all small and micro businesses. Okay. So whether you're in the service industry mm -hmm. or you're into the business of transforming inputs into outputs, mm -hmm. once you have a business and you're earning and you're adding value, we're focusing on you. We're trying to get you to look at how do you market your products better to a wider range of customers mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. right? We know you can reach persons on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We know you can reach persons down the road and you're using the traditional means. We know that. But those type of patterns are being changed. Most, of, most customers now are looking for things online, mm -hmm. so you need to get online. But the, the, in, in Jamaica, we're a very traditional society. True. Right? Very traditional. But we're moving to become more modern. We are. As much as we're trying to hold on to our traditions. We usually do things by word of mouth. Right? That's true. And is it that this, this new initiative is, is supposed to take on the, the form of word of mouth, but usually on, online? Because what word of mouth is, you know, is you tell this person, that person That's tell that person, that person, you know? So is it is it going to be that type of marketing where it's a it's a it's a chain reaction type of marketing, or is it just going to be I'm going to boost you on Google, I'm going to boost you on Facebook? How, how is it? How is the marketing going to be? Well, that's that's an interesting tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, is tradition though opposed? I mean, if somebody is searching for a product online, mm -hmm. is that person betraying tradition, or is or is that person? Um, using the new tradition, I guess, is mm, tradition yeah. is, is static. I mean, it's, mm. I mean, so yeah. that, uh, that that's a that, that's a good point there. But the thing mm. about it is, is that um, businesses adapt. You mm. know, mm. As, as time goes by, you know, mm -hmm. businesses adapt. Mm -hmm. Ten to fifteen years ago, almost everything we did, you know, was done, you know, through um, block and mortar type mm -hmm. setup, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Now we're seeing, even though we still traditionally like to do things or interface with people, mm -hmm. right, we do see where people are resorting to shopping online, mm -hmm. the new generation. right? The new, especially, especially the That's new generation. Especially, they're they're always, always on their phone. Um, they're always on their phone. I don't know if it's a matter of us becoming more lazy or is it just, you know, we're just adopting because yeah, that's where adapting. the world is going. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's where it's, we want things and we want it now. Yeah. How do we get it now? It's to go online. It's quicker to it's, go it, on Instagram and look on the page. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And go in the story. And true. Change. Very true. Yeah. I mean, because we, we had Good News Jamaica, we had a, a hiccup recently where our website was hacked. Um, I'm very happy it was hacked because that means that we were doing something important. But, um, <laughs> but um, it was hacked and, and it actually came down. But because we were on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all this, we never lost any, any trading at all. Mm, right, you know? right. So it it's, it's goes that the young people are online doing things. Doing things. Yeah. Um, mm. It's very interesting to me though. 
And I want to ask this question a little bit later, but I want to le learn about Kalam. Mm. Did I pronounce it correctly? That's right, yeah. Kalam. Kalam. Okay, good. <laughs> Congratulations, so, not easy. Eh? Thank you, thank you. So it's, it's a Hawaiian word. It's a Hawaiian word, yeah. So we are, um, I guess, islands, in, you know, we have this island spirit, you know, yes, yes. within us, and uh, that's where Lady was born, yeah, in, in, okay. the, in the mountain of Kalau. That's a mountain in, in, in the island of Oahu. Okay. Mm. And that's where everything was. Everything is started. So, are you Hawaiian? I wish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting confused there for me. <laughs> I wish I was Hawaiian. Uh, I'm from Spain originally. Okay. Yeah, okay. although we were based out of uh, San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> but I would pay. Well, I mean, do we Hawaiian or oh, Jamaican for that matter? Now that I know Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamaica is better than Hawaii. Right. Everybody knows that. I mean, that's fine. I mean. <laughs> but um, okay, so. Kalau is is has teamed up with OAS mm -hmm. and with JBDC to and with Micah, Micah. And with Micah right. to to bring this opportunity to mm -hmm. um, the Latin America and Caribbean um, area region. Mm -hmm. Why? How? I mean, I know it started from an idea. You know, you're saying right. I, I want. How did the idea formulate anyway? Well, I will tell you why. So what, when we launched Kalau three years ago we realize that uh, digitizing uh, millions of MSMEs in the hemisphere, in the Americas, was not something that one business could do. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, for two reasons. Once, uh, one, it, it requires awareness. So thank you for this time, because mm -hmm. it requires you know, awareness. We need to raise awareness, and that needs to be done locally, mm -hmm. because it's their local businesses. And second, once they are digitized, once they are online, we need to have we need to help them uh, manage this demand. Mm -hmm. Somebody else was somebody was asking today in the lunch, like, hey, people don't know how to print labels properly. Or, mm -hmm. There are some things or tricks and such that are kind of easy. They're free. They're, there's there are local avenues to help you further boost your business. Then. Mm -hmm. All these network of organizations that uh, unite around this plan is not possible to do unless you are uh, implementing this plan in a um, multilateral fashion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is no way one business can say, hey, uh, micro and small businesses of the Americas, here you are, digitized. Nobody has succeeded in that. Right. The, the reason, I mean, the proof is that the level of the, the, the percentage of micro and small businesses that remain offline, mm -hmm. it's remained steady for the last 10 years, which is like 90%. Mm -hmm. That's a proof that nobody has succeeded exactly. with yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly. So, kind of, it's like a four leg table in a sense that the Organization of American States is one leg, mm -hmm. uh, the government, MICAF, is another leg, the technology is another leg, and the JVC, BDOs, organizations in the field. Mm -hmm they make up the fourth leg and we realize this is the only way having four legs that we can have a strong table uh, on top of which micro and small businesses can feel strong in this uh, path to digi uh, digitalization. So where was your first country? Well the first country was Mexico and we did it in a pilot mm -hmm. uh, that was prior to the presentation in the sixth inter-american um, mm -hmm. Dialogue uh, with high authorities in Salvador, presented by the Organization of American States, and that was the first attempt at building a table with multiple legs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we did it with the Chambers of Commerce and Government of Mexico. It was a three-leg. It was a pilot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, nevertheless, very successful. And yeah. So yeah. Tell, tell me about some of the some of the markers that you saw um, with with MSMEs in Mexico. So the first thing we saw. We see two things when, when we launch in the country. First, obviously, the, the immediate intended result. Uh, micro and small businesses are online. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is this spark of interest, this energy mm -hmm. that is not intended. I mean, it's, it's intended, but it's not something that you plan. Mm -hmm. It's unplanned, it's organic, mm -hmm. it, 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 it takes its own shape at its own pace. In each country, is different. But it's huge. It, this, the energy, the, the spark. Uh, there's a lot of organizations. Uh, how can I join? Mm -hmm. But they don't have a self-interest behind. They don't really want to have any. There's no commercial intent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is like 
the, uh, there's a realization uh, that we need to do something about it. So all sorts of organizations from different backgrounds, different um, yeah, the profiles, they join. So this network of agents that um, uh, join around this movement to digitize the macro businesses is the second thing we see that's, that was surprising, but is, the, is as beautiful as having the micro businesses digital, having all this, yeah. So, so Clifford, here in Jamaica, and please jump in whenever you want, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, in Jamaica, is Minecraft looking to any specific uh, enterprise, any, any specific, uh, what is the word, I'm looking, industry, mm -hmm. um, to, to support into this digit, digitization? Right, so um, yesterday we had a workshop mm -hmm. with our business development organization. Mm -hmm. Right, we are seeking to roll out this plan mainly through our business development organization. Okay, right, they have direct interface with our MSME clients, mm -hmm. they assist our MSME clients on a regular basis really and they provide to them all type of services financial advice mm -hmm. marketing advice capacity building support and so on mm -hmm. so this plan right offers a platform for which these enterprises these business development organization can actually offer something new mm -hmm. some value added to their customers to their msmes because what we find is that yes someone comes to you as a business development organization for some advice mm -hmm. as to how to market their products right and what you do you'll probably go and tell them hey let's go set up a website mm -hmm. that requires technical knowledge mm -hmm. that requires for them mm -hmm. to probably pay mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. this remove all of those barriers this means that um, these MSMEs have free access to a website these MSMEs no, the, the time factor mm -hmm. is drastically reduced, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So we find that the videos yesterday were very welcoming of this initiative mm -hmm. because they see this as a complement to what they do, right? Right? Especially for those businesses that are very small, mm -hmm. right? They, they, they don't have the time, they don't have the money to actually, you know, take on major undertaking as it relates to website development and so on, but this gives them a starting point mm -hmm. on which they can have a web presence without actually creating a massive website. They can still reach customers and they can still push um, whatever promotional material they have or, or, or so on on, mm -hmm. on a web platform. So I'm, I'm thinking about um, non-traditional enterprises. Right. right? Um, well, okay, so what is non-traditional? Bombers, mm. web developers, mm -hmm. uh, singers, um, you know, people like that who mm -hmm. offer a service or, you know, they're, they're one person, they're sole proprietor, mm -hmm. plumbers, right? right? Uh, get on the website, get on, get on, put themselves on the, on the internet. Mm -hmm. How do you market that? I mean, is it that you're going to say, to the entire Jamaican population that there is this plumber mm -hmm. that based on the pictures and the videos that are on the website and how exciting that person is online, mm -hmm. you can trust this plumber. How is that going to work? Right. You see, there's some amount of um, due diligence that is still required. Yes. Because yes, we are creating a platform for multiple persons, mm -hmm. right? So uh, at the end of the day, competition will reign supreme. Mm -hmm. Right, so you are, though we create this platform for you to exercise your, your opportunity to, um, to market yourself and to generate income, mm -hmm. you'll be competing still against others doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right, so, your, so what you offer and the quality in which you offer it will determine whether or not people actually go. Because they, there's a certain review element that actually guide how you appear on, on, on this platform, mm -hmm. right? So those who have great reviews, those who are doing good business, they will obviously Triumph. rank rank high and, and triumph, right? So we, we don't want to bring in, and from a policy standpoint, the ministry never seeks to be exclusive, mm -hmm. but more so inclusive. So we try to incorporate all persons, but at the same time, there's a certain level of quality that we, we are accountable to. And that's why 
the BDOs working through the business development organization is also important mm -hmm. because BDOs de facto mm -hmm. act as a screen for mm -hmm. quality and, and, and where you are as a business. Mm -hmm. A BDO will go and say, oh, you know, Charles, you, you may be, you're, you're not at this level yet, let's do this, let's do that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and before you go online. Right? or before you do this or before you do that so they act as a screen and mm -hmm. it's good for you mm -hmm. because if you are not ready mm -hmm. it may affect the long-term survival of your business you spoke about levels yeah. is it a requirement for the companies to be registered with the company's office no not at this point okay. we are we, but we still because registration and formalization is also a policy element a pol that the ministry mm -hmm. and certainly my division is strong on Right? Mm -hmm. Very strong on formality. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, formality is not only just about um, being formal, there are mm -hmm. benefits to being formal. Yes. Some of those we can go into later on, right? Mm -hmm. But for example, if you want government contracts, you have to be formal. Mm -hmm. So we do push formalization, but for this platform, right, we recognize that some people may not be at that level yet where they want to or, or where, where, they, where they think they should. Mm -hmm. But if we act in, 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 in collaboration with our BDOs, then you know all of this will come into one you know good good thing because when you register, right, you are saying to the world that okay I'm formal, I'm doing things according to standard and so on. Right? So the BDOs will help the MSMEs come up to that standpoint. Okay. But until then you can still access the platform, right? But if you're we advise that if you know that your quality is not up to standard, then contact a business development organization. They are here to help. But the majority of them does this for free, right? Mm -hmm. The majority of them does this because it's good work and that they have a mandate to do this, right? And even where they charge a few um, shillings or so, it's, it's, it's highly subsidized, right? Because they are providing a service. So I want to talk about the subsidy, right? And, and I know you say free. Right. And, and these BDOs, they must earn in some way right. by doing this work. Right. Right? How does this coincide with the voucher for technical assistance that these BDOs have been pushing mm -hmm. because it allows them to also earn? Mm -hmm. um, I think of many different BDOs who are now signed up with the Bank of Jamaica to offer these vouchers for technical assistance to do financial planning and um, yeah. what, what, whatever it is that you need to build your business in order to, for it to be quote unquote legitimate. Right. Now, the, th yeah, ahead, the thing about it is you, when, you, when you ask or when you're receiving technical assistance, mm -hmm. it depends on what you need assistance with. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of the times people need assistance with how to get their business to a level mm -hmm. Um, financially mm -hmm. that they can now seek to expand mm -hmm. right why, why, why are you expanding so that you can access new markets mm -hmm. right to get these new markets you have to have some form of platform some form of mechanism where you can now reach to this market mm -hmm. right it doesn't make sense you 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 you, you build a lot of um, equipment gadgets for, for for whatever it is that you make and you don't have a market for it mm -hmm. And when, you, when the market is there for it, you have to reach them mm -hmm. because other persons are trying to reach them. Mm -hmm. So in, as it relates back now to technical assistance, we're saying this platform is something else. It's added okay. to what you're doing. So right? it augments and this that. Is, it augment, it augments that. Mm -hmm. And this is something you don't have to know use hard-earned funds mm -hmm. to get to. Mm -hmm. right? it, you, you have a base here mm -hmm. that is free. Right, so when you when when you do get the technical assistance, you can channel those funds into other areas mm -hmm. that are less that, that you have less competency in, mm -hmm. and that ne is vastly more in need of improvement. Excellent, mm -hmm. that sounds great. It, make, it makes sense because um, Tiffany and I were just talking about today just um, a nonprofit. Right, mm -hmm. so a nonprofit wants to they want to create a business so they because a non-profit is a business how no matter how we look at it exactly. it's a business because right? it, it has to be sustained it has to be so sustainability is the key exactly <laughs> right so so a non-profit wants to go online wants to get an online presence so that they can they can chronicle what they're doing 
And so when they're going out for funding and so on and so forth, they have the information already online to show their activity and such. <laughs> Is that also, are nonprofits also uh, welcome, NGOs and such welcome? Sure. I mean, if they're looking for it, you need to be there. Yeah. And there's obviously a huge demand for what NGOs are doing, right? From both sides, financing and just from the people receiving their, those services. So yes. by all means, NGOs should be there because uh, why not? The question is, why not? Yes. Um, th th there's no harm. No. <laughs> Go and be right. online, right? Uh, actually, in Mexico, funny enough, doctors were the only ones who were saying, actually, I'd rather be hidden. No. Oh. Because, you know, there's a danger yeah. in some, oh, you know, right. in some population, you know, some areas, right? Mm -hmm. If they identify, one, you know, somebody to have resources, or well, right. that person might be in danger. Mm -hmm. But that's the only case <laughs> where we have been taught, I want to be hidden. Mm -hmm. uh, the, but there was a legit reason behind it. Right. <laughs> of course, of course. I understand that. But uh, yeah, NGOs don't want to be hidden. They want to be visible, yeah. One of the things that's growing in Jamaica now, uh, when you speak of doctors, um, is the old holistic health, right? Um, living off of, of what they what's now called an alkaline diet, where mm -hmm. you only eat what God made food and not mm -hmm. man made manufactured mm -hmm. food and, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But these these companies and these people are not registered. They're not they're not formal or anything of that nature. And it kind of is in conflict with like the medical prof profession and so on and so forth. So how would they be, because they would definitely benefit from this because they sell products, right? They sell right. tonics and they sell yeah. Yeah. syrups and things that are made of natural mm -hmm. um, resources. So how would they then uh, fit on your, uh, when you know that it's a direct conflict to the status quo of medicine? Mm. Look, I mean, there's uh, psychics who open their website. I mean, we don't really vouch for them. They, we don't really believe in what they do. Mm -hmm. But in a sense, there's, I mean, the customer is the one who end up mm -hmm. you know, using them. So mm -hmm. who are to judge, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, who are, who are yeah. we to judge in a sense? We don't judge. Mm -hmm. The only categories, obviously, that don't have room in this are those that are selling something that's yeah, illegal yeah, yeah, in yeah, each yeah, country, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. They're just suspicious in that sense. Mm -hmm. But other than that, if that product is legal mm -hmm. in that uh, country, mm -hmm. well, I mean, definitely we might like it more or less, but we are we don't judge. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so it's open to anyone as long as you're not doing something illegal. Right. Right. And we'll, we'll know. We'll know if, if we, you know, based on based on our observation of mm -hmm. what's happening on the platform, we know mm -hmm. companies that are acting, you know, illegally or in contravention of certain um, right. rules and, and so on. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, as we say, it's not to be restrictive, mm -hmm. but also to encourage customers to know that there there's, there's still an element of due diligence mm -hmm. that is required, you know, as a customer based on what you, you buy and, you know, who you buy from mm -hmm. and so on. And for us, we recognize also that there's a certain element of standard mm -hmm. right that we have to ensure that you know um, customers or, or, or people who are offering by the platform are up to standard mm -hmm. and we will be working with our agencies such as the Bureau of Standards mm -hmm. so when we get um, information metric based on the metrics we have mm -hmm. information in the background that we will relay such information to our Standards people mm -hmm. who we hope and, and, and who will you know empower to sort of um, you know assist these persons in their capacity to actually come up to stand because we do recognize that um, Jamaica is a very entrepreneurial society and people Absolutely. try things all the time. Absolutely right, and sometimes you try and all you need is a little bit of assistance to get you yeah, over the line. And when we have integrated platforms, it helps right. When when we have Capacity building that is linked to marketing, that is linked to standards development, we we are we are we are in for something good, right? So the, this morning the Bureau of Standards was at our launch, mm -hmm. and they indicated that they would be willing to help mm -hmm. as it relates to you know getting persons up to standard. They have a unit that is specially designed for that purpose. Mm -hmm. The JBDC, who is our um, state-run entity for capacity building is also on board. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, all of our business development partners who we, who we talk to on a regular basis, they're on board and we still need to reach out some more. So we hope 
you know, that this will be a major catalyst for um, developing the MSME sector and to bring them into the fold in terms of formalizing them and in terms of getting them up so, to standard. Okay. With this initiative, there are going to be a lot of people who sell soaps that they make and whatever it is, these uh, castor oil in the little bottles that want an export market, right? Mm -hmm. It is going to wake them up to say, oh, now I can have an audience in England, in Peru, in Guatemala, wherever. Mm -hmm. But is there, is there going to be a fix on a bottleneck mm -hmm. of customs? We, we, we don't envision that. Our customs people are well equipped to deal with um, you know, the volume of trade that comes through our borders. We have full confidence that they are. Mm -hmm. you know, um, we have always um, stated that you know, a lot of the activities that come through our port come, is coming in on the import side. So I, I don't think, <laughs> for want of better words, that the export side has been right. that, for, that, that, that much stretched. You know? right. so I, I have confidence that you know, there wouldn't be a bottleneck there. In fact, we launched um, just uh, a few months ago, our national um, trade portal that sort of synchronized how we do trade um, within the country and, you know, it's sort of making it more seamless. Your national trade. trade portal? Yes, the national trade portal. Right. Tell me about that. So, I am not the expert on okay. that. And, um, Just give me some cliff notes yes, on that. Yeah, but Clifford, give me yeah, some cliff notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, so that is, is, a, is a national where all the different agencies uh -huh. that is intertwined with, with trade, yeah. right, all the processing of documents and so on is done via, via that portal, right? So it, 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 it sort of make it easier for, for, us to, for us to trade, export and import. Okay. So all the agencies, we have a couple of agencies well <laughs> okay. that's involved in the, in the trade process, the trade board, customs, mm -hmm. plant quarantine, you know, and all of those parties will ensure also that the, the, what goes out, what leaves our borders is in keeping with what the international standard is mm -hmm. for trade. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the worry that probably some of these products are not you know, may cause harm or damage or so on. Mm -hmm. All of that will be looked at, you know, when we're talking about um, testing and so on to ensure mm -hmm. that they're, they're, they're up to standard. So, you know, we're... Well, so now, now we have the industry, the growing industry that is going to absolutely fuel Jamaica from now on. It's, it's been predicted every single person on the street knows that this is going to fuel Jamaica, the, the cannabis industry, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, right. So, so, no, no, it comes difficult. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so, Jamaica is moving towards uh, normalizing mm -hmm. um, the cannabis industry in Jamaica, right? And is that going to be something through this platform where someone can say, okay, now I sell um, cannabis oil, or whatever the case is that I can export is that because it's it's uh, not it's not is it illegal still or is it well at this point I can say that the trade of those type of substance across borders is not um, legal it's not, it's not depending legal. on where you're selling it to. no 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 right? it, it, no it, 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 it the international trade of it is 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 not legal. Oh. Just local. Uh, just local. Okay. So if you notice, um, you know, the, there are states in the United States of America that you know legalize mm -hmm. it fully. Canada mm -hmm. is is also a legal mm -hmm. country for this. But you notice that it there's very really limited, if none, trade between countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. There could. There, I'm I'm thinking that there could be transportation. Mm -hmm. from companies to companies mm -hmm. across borders, but mm -hmm. it's still not really trade. So our, our, this platform will, of course, be in keeping with the international oh. laws as they are. Okay. And I think that is coming down from the United Nations. So mm -hmm. until certain development happens in that regard, you know, we, we, we don't see ourselves um, endorsing international trade mm -hmm. of um, of cannabis at a certain level. But I, I'm like not the way, as well. but I like <laughs> the way you said that because yeah. that means that the local market mm. 
can benefit. Right. I, I, I think there is some avenue there for, for some, you know, I, I, I will say I'm not the expert on this either. No, no, I'm, I'm but, not. But, but, I, but I understand that, you know, within the context of the local market, mm -hmm. there is some development as it relates to commercial activity mm -hmm. in cannabis. And we, uh, by no means, are placed in any limit on what um, that is once it meets the legal um, requirement right, or it is in keeping with the legal context. Okay. We have lounges now that deals with cannabis. Right, right. Yeah, they yeah, have that now. Yeah. They have that now. And so I'm thinking about, you know, if I am a if I'm a grower, if I'm a farmer mm -hmm. and I and I do the extraction and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. from the seeds or whatever it comes I don't know the process. Mm -hmm. But um, and now I make cannabis oil, I make uh, hemp clothes, I mean, you know what I mean, things mm -hmm. of that nature. Mm -hmm. I now have a platform, I can create a website and sell my products. Well, but the, isn't the platform global, say? I, 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 if, I, if I am not mistaken, I think what the companies do, they can market online, but mm -hmm. I, I think most of the selling actually takes place within a, a limited um, scope, meaning that you, oh. you, 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 you sell from a location, mm -hmm. right? Because the, as far as I know, the security details around the cannabis industry is also important. So mm -hmm. every every ounce um, has to be traced back to source and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So and I know for some of our companies, they you can market and, and have an online presence, mm -hmm. but the, the physical sale or trade mm -hmm. trade does not necessarily take place online. online it takes place okay. from a physical location mm -hmm. that okay. is actually. Um, um, but, but it's not really licensed. Right. Okay. Right. The license in order to do it. Yeah. Yes. So they are licensed okay. to do that okay. because you have different type of license. Like know, a dispensary. In, right. So okay. you have so and when you have a dispensary, you can only dispense from At that location. location. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this initiative, mm -hmm. how did it link up with OAS? Well, there is obviously a concern, right, that the micro and small businesses across uh, the Americas, uh, the productivity is um, not on the rise, you know, precisely, right, it's actually uh, declining. Mm -hmm. uh, so this concern is a shared concern, right, not only, you know, by the, count, by the business itself that is actually um, failing, but also uh, by the country and the Organization of American States as a uh, multinational entity as well. Mm -hmm. So there was this opportunity, right, to um, have this movement um, presented and launched across the Americas. And, and it was um, yeah, a huge opportunity that sense to um, raise awareness, uh, you know, at scale mm -hmm. and uh, do so uh, multilaterally so all countries can benefit from what's working in another country. Not doing it in isolation, but mm -hmm. rather doing it in you know, with a lot of countries together, which is also a benefit in itself. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Clifford, with, as far as Jamaica is concerned, um, we're the first country in the Caribbean region, in the English speaking in right. um, Caribbean, to jump onto this initiative. What yeah. in this initiative and our outlook on ourselves caused us to take the leap? Okay, well, at the, the meeting which Danny mentioned, mm -hmm. Jamaica was present at that meeting. Mm -hmm. And we saw the value in the presentation shared then. Mm -hmm. And our, our principal director, Mr. Oral Shaw, who was who attended that meeting, said, hey, you know, let's see yeah, what we can true. do together in, in this. And mm -hmm. we reached out to Danny. And, uh, you know, since then, we have just been moving step by step to get this, get this done. I must say that it, our, our MSME, an entrepreneurship policy, which we updated, just last year, it has a primary um, goal of you know getting our MSMEs online, expanding their market presence by having them you know connected to international networks by being online. So we saw that it was very in, in it was very fitting and in keeping with our policy uh, mandate to actually get this up and running. So we moved assiduously to have sensitize our stakeholders as well as to have the launch and sign the memorandum of understanding earlier today. Okay. The, the industry in fitness is booming mm -hmm. in Jamaica. 
but we don't see much advertisement mm -hmm. for it at all. Mm -hmm. It's either you know where to go or you don't know where to go. Um, how, not many people know about this initiative. There was a little blurb in the Observer the other mm -hmm. day, and of course, we're going to push it out. But mm -hmm. how will you reach out to these different industries that traditionally you just don't, unless you know, you just don't know? Right, right. But you see, we always say that, you know, um, when, we, when we launch initiatives, you know, though, though Kingston is the capital, we try to have sensitization and public education right across the country. Mm -hmm. So we will be following up this with some amount of public education, oh, right? And, you know, from time to time, we have fair seminars, workshops, mm -hmm. and even where other of our partners have seminars and workshops, we turn up and we deliver message, messages that uh, is critical to our to our MSME development. So we try to, as much as possible, um, um, have some public education mm -hmm. of our initiatives mm -hmm. going, and we try to reach as far and as wide as possible uh, in terms of, you know, the reach island-wide. Because Jamaica is just Kingston. And, and that is always say that, you know, hey, everything happens in Kingston. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. we, we, we actually, uh, especially for, for this ministry, we actually, we are in charge of agriculture mm -hmm. and industry and commerce. You know, this doesn't just happen in Kingston. Mm -hmm. So we have to be out there, you know, we have to be all over. Some place, I've learned of some places in Jamaica, just by being here, I've learned of some <laughs> places in Jamaica that I didn't know before. So, but, but that's good because that of means course. our message is getting out there. It's getting into the, what we call the nook and cranny yes, of, 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 of Jamaica. I would, I'm, I'm just going to put something in there. I would love for Micah to send a representative to the Maroons so we can start to put them online Definitely. to get their initiatives. They have festivals throughout the year and they are amazing. Hmm. And it is our culture, the, the, the roots of our culture hmm. that people are not coming to right. because yeah. they just don't know. Because whereas they are doing this from their heart, they, they throw these festivals up every year and like the Charleston Maroons just had a great festival. Hmm. It was great. And, and we went, we were amazed by it, but not hmm. many people were there. Right, right. 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 That right. also, had, that, that just has to do with, word, that, that, with getting the word out. You know? that, that's definitely, mm -hmm. we, we, we have seen, you know, we, are, we, we know this, so we have seen where, you know, it's, though, though we try, it's somewhat difficult to reach mm -hmm. everybody and, you know, some form of a targeted approach, you know, has to really take place. So and that's where, come, was, that's where the BDOs come in. That's where the BDOs come in because, for example, um, SDC, um, you know, uh, it's, it's a social, they have a social mandate, but we realize that we, we can't talk about social well-being without talking about economic well-being. Mm -hmm. And part of the economic well-being is establishing sustainable enterprises. Mm -hmm. So they have been beating the path, you know, to the grassroots communities about, you know, the, it's some of the initiatives that, that we're doing and we'll continue to leverage on their support as a stakeholder and as colleagues, you know, to help us with, with this type of messaging. What are some examples of the other BDOs? You mentioned so, SDC. So we were talking about SDC, we're talking about um, Branson Entrepreneurship Center, we're talking about the Jamaica Manufacturing Association, we're talking about the Small Business Alliance, the Small Business, yes, the Small Business Association of Jamaica and MSME Alliance. Mm -hmm. We're talking about um, private, other private sector persons, the universities, Northern Caribbean University, University of the West Indies, UTEC, um, even microfinancing associations are, 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 are BDOs as well, hmm. you know, um, yes, the Bureau, of Stand the Bureau of Standards, also your uh, Tourism Development Product Company really? is, is a video as well for the craft, the craft um, persons, the craft, yes. craft, okay. craft persons. And we're even even scientific research council, you know, from, as it relates to product development. Yes, yes. You know, so we, we, we cover the BD, we, our network of video covers a, a, a wide range of different type of business development um, type services. So this has really started a catalyst of, of, of building 
Yeah, build in uh, blocks. Build in mm -hmm. blocks. Because it sounds like with all the different uh, BDOs you're talking about, this is straight hand holding. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So we, we, we the, the natural relationship here, we expect that, you know, a person will come on to, um, say they come on to the, um, the Bureau of Standards, mm -hmm. for example, for, you know, information relating to standards, you know. The Bureau is not really interested in our, 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 their core business is not marketing. Mm -hmm. But they'll say to the person that, hey, I know you're, you're, you're here for this, but have you considered this? Mm -hmm. Right? If you have not mm -hmm. considered this, hey, you know, look at it, you know, go on the ministry website, see, you, you know, what mm -hmm. it's all about. Mm -hmm. Right? They, they may even refer them to another video that has mm -hmm. been specialized in this type of service. For example, the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, the JBDC, they said to them, okay, hey, you know, Branson Entrepreneurship Center, the Jamaica Manufacturing Association, though their focus is on manufacturing, it, it, it's, they still require, um, you know, sorry, marketing, and they do also have MSMEs within, within the Manufacturing Association. We also talk about the Chambers of Commerce. Right, Chamber right. Like the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce. Chamber this Commerce. is also a complementary activity for them because oh, hey, they can say, oh, we, our members, our smaller members, come to us, you know, you know, mm -hmm. come to us. We we can help you, mm -hmm. you know. At least we, you have access to a product mm -hmm. that is free. It, it 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 supplements your offering when you go call into the the MSMEs to come and join. Excellent. So there's really no reason for any of you MSMEs out there to stay where you are. This is about growth. This is about moving you to a whole new level of success and impact. Because the bottom line is, we are going to grow from that 1% to the wanted 5% and the 7% and so on and so forth annually that Jamaica is looking forward to. So it is your turn. What are you gonna do? Make the move. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you. I look forward to also thank being you. one of the MSMEs Gross on me. the platform. Please try try it out this evening. Definitely. I, I, mean, I, I mean, it's, it's simple. I'm not fire, but it's, it's pretty, so pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's so nice. It's, it's a do it yourself, Mark. It's like it. Now, I already have a website. Yeah, that was so, so, then you should. <laughs> so, right. So, so um, that's also okay, right? I can already have my website. Yeah, still sure. To be honest, yeah, because this is different, right? This mm -hmm. is a, a smart site connected with Google in a sense that you get reporting as well. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, there's some... There, there's certain yeah. benefits that you can still yeah. get, even even mm -hmm. though you have your website. Right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Try it. <laughs> there's no excuse whatsoever. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right.